One of the things I get on videos is a lot of ignorance. There's so much ignorance in the world and there's so many people wanting to establish their bias, confirmation bias, if you will, where they think a, a certain thing, right? Maybe they think that, uh, that they're more free because they're, they're in the USA. And, and when you grow up thinking that, you want to validate that. You don't want anything that's gonna make you have to reject that idea, right? So what you tend to do is overcompensate and just insist that it's true, even if there's, there's not really a factual basis for it being true, like we're the greatest, we have more freedom. And so when people like me go out and we do videos and we show Mako and, you know, yes, it's beautiful. Sure, here is corruption. Sure, here's there. I, I show negative and positive things, but my general presentation on Mako is positive because there's so much more freedom down here and because people are more human. And I value that. I value freedom over security because if you value security over freedom, you will have neither. And you probably won't have tacos either. Sorry. So I thought we'd do a video about property rights because along with all these people saying, oh, you have no rights. You know, Gavin, you can't talk to cops like that. Gavin, you can't do this. Gavin, you can't even own property. And I get a lot of that ever since I've come here. I get a lot of that. So I thought I'd address that in particular because I know people that are looking at coming down here often have questions. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Yes, you. Absolutely, you absolutely can own property as a foreigner in Mexico. Just a tiny glass of Argentinian, Argentinian Malbec right here. Argentinians and the Chileans, they make pretty good wine. So, yes, you can buy property. But I'm going to go a little further than that tonight because I want to tell you guys a little story about property rights in Mexico so you understand how much different it is than in the USA, where, where basically, well, unfortunately, we seem to have no rights at all in the USA. There's something I think important to establish that we should all be thinking about before we go into the property rights. All people have the same rights everywhere in the world. Governments cannot take those away. Governments can't legislate those. Governments can't decide what they are. They don't get to define them. Human rights are, always have been, and always will be the same. Criminals with guns in government always have and always will try to take them away and steal them from us. And as individuals, we have to decide which fights are worth fighting and which fights and regulations and illegal rules to control our life, we will just work around or find some other alternative and which ones we will actively resist. And, and that's kind of a big thing because you, you have to pick your battles, right? People think that I'm crazy and oh, Gavin, yeah, I'm adjusting my light a little. You know, you're gonna, they're gonna kill you. They're gonna do this. And, and I say, you don't, you don't understand, like I left the USA because there was no freedom, because I didn't want my kids to grow up there because they were going to imprison or kill me. That doesn't mean if I go somewhere else that I won't be imprisoned or killed for standing up. But what I like about a place that has more freedom is that people say, well, if you stand up, eventually somebody's gonna off you. I can't live in fear of that. I have to put a little faith in, in God and, and say, look, I'm gonna do the best that I can. I would rather die having freedom and having stood up for it than live and die just licking boots and acting like a slave. People have the entirely wrong perspective about our rights. We keep looking at rights and laws and regulations as this is what government says. You have to obey the laws. You have to obey the rules. No, you have to respect other people. You have to respect life, liberty, and property. That's the law. And when the government, when a police officer defends that, then they're acting within the law. And when they're not, they're the criminals. And it's okay to treat them as such within the boundaries of honorable behavior be better than them. But what does that mean for rights? I don't wanna to get too far off topic here. I just wanna to establish that. 
The rights are the same. People say, you don't have the right to do this. You don't have the right to do that. You don't have that right in Mako. There's just a twofold thing. Number one, I always have my rights. Whether I actively fight for everyone, whether I let myself be violated, because the truth is to survive in this world, you will be violated by the bully sometimes. It's a question of how and when you stand up. The question is, are you standing up at all? And that's the problem. That's why people hate hearing the truth in the state of the USA, because they're not actually standing up at all. They're submitting to all of the abuse. And somewhere deep inside, I think that they're ashamed. Americans that aren't actually in Mako, who have totally submitted to the US fascist state, and they don't like it that I'm down here having more freedom, I think is what it really is, will be like, oh, you have no rights there, you're a foreigner, because that's, that's probably how people treated them. And so instead of standing up, they submit, and then they want to treat other people that way. It's an unfortunate behavior that people that have chosen to cower in a corner often do. So the first thing we should establish is that the first piece of the Constitution de Mexico is the recognition that the rights apply equally to everyone, including the foreigner and the alien. That's the first part of the Mexican Constitution. It has some really good things. It's large, it's a little complicated, but I always focus on the human rights. The politics don't mean so much to me. The human rights is what matters. I'm not involved in politics in Mexico. They got their elections and all the stuff, just like we do in the USA. I care about the human rights. So first of all, as a foreigner, your rights recognized in the Constitu Constitution are the same. Of course, then government proceeds to make some exceptions. For example, uh, in owning property, there's some restrictions about owning property on the coast and on the border if you're a foreigner. Now, it doesn't mean you can't, but there's trusts and, and lawyers and stuff like that. So if you want to buy coastal property, you may have to play the game a little bit. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't own coastal property. And then people will tell you stories about owning property in Mexico. Oh, well, these foreigners, these gringos, they bought this coastal property, they bought a resort, and then the government and the locals all stole it from them. These things happen. And the thing is, when they happen here, they make big news because the headlines and the propaganda love that. And I don't approve of corruption no matter where it lands. But for perspective, we should understand that people are having their houses, their property forfeited, taken by the government, taken by by the community all the time in the US. So much that you barely even see a news story. It's not even considered outrageous when a family is forced off their land because they live too close to Area 51, even though their family was there before the government was, right? Everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you gotta follow the law. Well, so there's, there's things that happen. A lot of times what I think happens here with property right problems is it's so easy. There's so much less regulation. So you could probably buy a piece of property and not even go through the government, right? And somebody just sign you the deed. Well, that might be a good thing. However, if you're a foreigner and you don't really understand the system, I wouldn't go shelling out a lot of money unless you're absolutely sure you're not being scammed, unless you're absolutely sure that the deeds, for example, someone might go sell a piece of property, but the papers aren't really in order. In reality, there's a dispute because another member of the family claims that they own the property, and then down the road, you could have some problems. And that doesn't mean it's just, it doesn't mean that it's, it should be that way. But sometimes when this stuff happens, people really had no idea what they were getting, getting into. So the first thing when you come to Mako is it's a good rule of thumb to just not wanna buy property. It's okay to rent. Like I don't, eventually maybe I'll own a house here, but I don't know exactly where I wanna settle. I don't have to be in a hurry. Rent is not expensive. Property sometimes can be if you get the property you want, right? But yes, you can own the property. If you're near the coast or a border, sometimes there's some games involved. Everywhere else, you pretty much just buy the property outright like you would buy a bar or, or a horse or anything else. What I would encourage you to do is just to make sure that you're not getting in something too good to be true. Make sure it's not shady. Make sure if you don't know what you're doing that you get somebody who speaks the language, that you go to the, you know, the, the offices that you go to the, the notary. Notaries are a big deal down here, right? That you get all the documents in order. And if you're buying it from somebody, that it's legitimate. But that's owning property. I actually came here to talk about more than that. Property rights. This actually goes back to the discussion I had with those police at the checkpoint. And I caught a lot of flack because I wouldn't 
speak Spanish to these cops that were trying to violate my rights. And then I looked at the video, like there was people talking in Spanish on that video saying like, I'm a Mexican and we don't want you here and you're a loser and you should be in jail. Then I went and looked at the video stats and a tiny percent of the people watching the video were actually in Mexico. So those comments from people who are pretending to be Mexicans, and some of them may very well have been American descent, a lot of them were just creating fake accounts. But these were the people, the people that, whether Mexicano or no, they weren't actually in Mexico. They're living under US slavery and they want the rest of the world to have to live the same way. And that was kind of enlightening to see those statistics. But I got to thinking about property rights because one of those discussions was, my car is my private property. And this is a common, if you watch videos of Mexican activists, this is, comes up. They're like, no, when the police try to search their car or try to harass them. It's not, guys, this isn't radical Gavin. Like this is normal stuff for Mexican activists. They're far more tenacious than we are, even if they might be a little calmer <laughs> than, than a worked up gringo. And they'll be like, no, this is my private property. You don't have any authority in here. You don't get to search. You don't, you don't get to touch this, right? And generally, in the end, the police will turn around and leave because police don't just get to walk up your car to your car and start breaking your windows in Mexico. That, that kind of violence and force is, is not tolerated unless there's something serious going on most of the time. And of course, if, if you're wise, you video the encounter. So yes, the private property argument applies to the car, but let's talk about your house as private property because this is kind of huge. And whether you live in Texas or California or Washington or anywhere, you know that in the US, if the police want to come into your house, they do. They will sometimes get a warrant, which the judge automatically signs off on in most cases. Oftentimes they'll do a no-knock warrant, kicking in doors in the middle of the night, sometimes killing people, their kids, their dogs, their babies. There's basically no law. There's no respect whatsoever for private property from the government in the USA. If the police want to traipse onto your property, kick in your gate and shoot your dog because he's barking on your own private property, they do it and there's zero consequences. If the police kick in your door and you think it's a burglar and you fight back and they kill you, zero consequences. If the police kick in your door and you're outraged and they beat you up and you say they don't have a warrant or you won't open the door, They'll just get a warrant later and get a post facto illegal warrant and call it legal. Now, anybody who's at all awake and engaged in what's going on in the USA knows this is true. You have no property rights on your person. You have no property rights in your car, in your house, nowhere. Now, you still have the right. Let me qualify that. The right exists, but the thugs with guns are taking that right and nobody's doing anything about it. It doesn't matter where in the country you are. Let's contrast that with Mexico. Because we talked about the question people always ask, can I buy land in Mexico? Is there restrictions on buying land? You know, what about my rights? I don't have rights because I'm not a Mexican citizen. We've covered that a little bit, but let's talk about the property rights. And again, it doesn't matter whether you're a citizen or not in your house compared to the USA. And this is a huge deal. The idea that police come into your house is unheard of in Mexico unless they go through a great deal of procedure. That's not tolerated. A cop kicking in someone's door without a warrant would be a major ordeal. I don't, I don't see cops knocking on people's doors here. You don't see cops kicking in doors here. Now, good luck because the buildings are made of concrete. Oftentimes they have a wall out front to give your property privacy. And then the doors are usually made of metal in metal frames embedded into that concrete. So first of all, they would have to be truly, truly badass to be able to kick in the door here. You all seen that video where the cops are like trying to beat this door in with this huge battery ram and it's so big they can't get in and this little old lady comes and opens the door and she's like, huh? That's kind of how it would be here. But you don't see cops running around with battering rams or C4 to blow open your compound. That's what they call it if they can't get in. If they can kick in your door, you're a civilian. If they can't get in, it's a compound and you're a radical. Anybody, anybody picked up on that in the States? Remember Waco? Remember Ruby Ridge? Remember Lavoie, the natives? Jeff Winehouse, Schaefer Cox, the Bundys? Are we putting the pieces together? We have no freedom because everybody's too busy worshiping the state and saying that some people should have rights and some people shouldn't. And when you do that, ultimately what it means is you don't have any yourself. In Mexico, 
under the Constitution. And while it's true that you'll, of course, see cops doing illegal searches in cars or in backpacks or harassing people, with much less violence, yes, but they still violate people's rights. That's what I was arguing with or attempting to with the police on the road at that checkpoint a while back. Not because I had it out for them or I was trying to be rude, but because they were violating the law and they were violating my rights in various ways. Rights that I not only possess inherently, but that are affirmed by the Constitution. It's not a political matter. It's a matter of human rights. But in your house, that's an area that the government here has not really tread on. Okay? To get a warrant for the house is rather a big deal. And they have to articulate probable cause. And cops don't just run around with, with pocketfuls of blanket warrants that a judge has signed off on. Like, and this is not how it works here. I'm not saying it never happens or that it's never abused, but this is important. In the States, it was a genuine concern. Like, will I wake up in the middle of the night with the cops kicking in my door because a warrant has been put out by the federal government? There was many times when I would lie awake at night in the USA when I would hear a sound and I had to deal with this reality every day because as an activist, as somebody who's high profile, involved in doing things that were controversial, it wasn't, generally speaking, the thug at the door I was worried about. It was that I knew that whenever they wanted to, those police would have no respect for my property. They would kick in my door. They would hurt me, my family, and I would have to determine how to respond to that. When you tell May Kanos these things, for example, that CPS comes and takes your children, they're shocked. Like, they have a hard time believing you here because... The idea that police and government agents could just come and arbitrarily take their children is beyond the realm of how they think. Despite the problems here, that's a freedom that they take for granted because they know that their children are their family and the family is sacred as well. So if the police want to come into your house, and I've actually asked locals about this. I've talked to Americanos that have been to jail, right? And the jails are also much more low-key. They, they don't have as good an infrastructure. But, it, for example, it's normal if you're in jail down here, whereas look at Ammon Bundy or Jeff Winehouse or Schaefer Cox. He can't see his family. They're in isolation. Uh, the, po the prison population down here is like a quarter of the U.S. per capita. But it's normal here, if you go drive by a state prison on Saturday or Sunday, there's vendors out front. The families are out there. The families can go in and have a picnic with their incarcerated family member. It doesn't mean it's humane. It doesn't mean I approve, because I think locking people in concrete boxes uh, is not justice. And it doesn't serve anybody, really, to lock people in concrete boxes for long periods of time. But again, that goes back to the family is far more sacred. The idea that the family can bring you a pizza if you're in jail is not is not a radical act, right? You don't, you don't think of that as a big deal. They take that for granted here. In the States, we, can't, we can hardly provide any help. We can send them commissary money to buy junk food from the corporate-run commissary. So on point, though, in your house, you're pretty safe. In your house, you don't have government agents coming into your house. It's possible if you're really wanted for something and, and they get a warrant and they go through the process, but it's not an easy process. In fact, it's such a big deal to come on to someone's property if you're a police officer. That I'm told that if someone's wanted, like if they want to arrest someone, they'll actually stand outside their property to talk to the person and they'll actually try to lure the person close enough to their fence so they can gra drag them, grab them and pull them through the fence because they know that they're not allowed to set foot on that property. That's how big of a deal it is, guys. I want you to just think about that. Think about a situation where the cops are standing on the edge of your property and you have your fence there. And they want to arrest you but they cannot enter your property, so they're trying to get a way for you to leave or so that they can get a hold of you without setting foot on your property. Compare that to what you live with every day in the USA. And just let that sink in for a second. It's kind of a big deal.
the property rights thing, the respect for property rights is a huge deal. It doesn't mean it's totally free here. It doesn't mean there's not corruption and abuse, because of course there is. I show you guys that just like I show you the good things. But that respect for private property, just like they respect the private property of your personal to a large degree, cops will rarely touch you unless you truly are under arrest. And even then, it's much more respectful. They don't throw you on the ground and kick you and beat you up because you got a little huffy with them. Like that kind of behavior is not how a cop on the streets gets to operate. It doesn't mean it never happens behind closed doors, but in the USA, they can do this openly and publicly and no one does a thing. The bolder among us film it. And we know we can do no more than that or we'll get shot or sent to prison ourselves. I wasn't willing to live in that world anymore under that blue ISIS regime. I didn't want my kids to grow up under that. The people that understand their rights and stand up for them. And if that grows in Mexico, it will continue to grow freedom, especially if they recognize that it has to be for everyone, not just the Mexicano, not just the people they like. And this is where we failed in the USA. We said, we have rights, but it's okay for the people we don't like. It's okay for the illegal, even though no such thing exists and the constitution forbids immigration restriction. They say it's okay for the Muslim or it's okay for those people. When you allow the rights of those you dislike to be violated, what you're really doing is giving up their own. And I hope the people of Mexico, the activists here, that that's something they can understand. The most important thing you can do as an activist, friends, is stand up for the rights of all people. That's what a true activist does. Activism isn't about nationalism. Activism and human rights is not about your flag. It's not about your color. It's not about where you were born. It's about justice. It's about freedom. Thanks, Clemito. All right, guys. So I'm going to wrap it up. Another kind of long show tonight, but I hope we covered your questions. Uh, I hope kind of kept it on pace. Covered quite a bit about uh, human rights in Mexico tonight. But my main point was I wanted to inform you guys on property rights, not only for buying land, and if you want to move down here or something like that, but the differences between the U.S. and Mexico when it comes to your home and, and your rights in that. So thank you all. Dispel the propaganda. Make your own video. Share this video. Whatever, whatever will inform people the best. Do it. And thank you all. You have a good night. I'm going to go spend a few minutes with the kids. And I'll probably be on uh, PS4 later tonight playing Blackout under real sign if any of you want to join me on there. All right? Take care, guys. Thanks all. Peace. Buenas noches. Gracias, breaking news now.